Well, <laughs> I hate to do this, but I have a feeling we're going to have another uh, Redux. I hope that's the pronunciation, R-U-D-U-X. Uh, liar, liar, butterfly wings on fire. Not butterfly wings, not butterflies wings on fire, but butterf a butterfly wings on fire. And a fact-finding uh, examination of Brother Mark Turner syndrome, butterflies in life. And for those who are music fans, here's the uh, symphony number no. seven of Gustav Mahler in the background. No, the sermon's like no, the message is going to go that long. It's about an hour and forty minutes. But uh, Otto Klumper conducting the Vienna Philharmonic from a recording from 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 dec from decades ago. But we digress. But something very interesting happened last night. Is, is and the sad thing is that came from a butterfly um, sister. That we were actually very good friends. And if you notice, there's actually a pattern of people that was good friends now were, were mortal enemies. If you notice that pattern, the sister contacted me last night. Uh, Amy Jo Talaric, uh, the Sarge Fields, and just. Lots of other people. Lots of other people because you know because of the drama. Now everybody says they want to defend Molly. Okay, but in order to defend Molly, we have to review Molly's qualifications to see if she's worthy of defense. I mean, if we're going to defend Molly, if Butterfly's going to defend Molly, then we're going to have to assume that that Molly has got a good argument. Uh, for the people to try to defend her. Well, by now we pretty much know that the... Excuse me, I look too much Mahler. And now we got the refrigerator on in the background. I can't win. <laughs> All right, we'll do a little more Mahler. <laughs> but if... If we're going to defend Molly and come to her defense, then then we have to make an academic argument. Is she worthy of, of defending? We would have to assume that if we're def defending her, that she has a good you know argument and worth of worthy of being being defended. But if the truth of the matter is told that she's actively lying, then we're going to see why you're. Why would you want to hold out somebody whose credibility can be easily called into question and when confronted, actually runs away? And it was kind of interesting, though, because that sister and I who texted me last night was once again coming up with a new ac accusation. And she said that I stalked a sister in Great Britain. Well, who's the name of the sister when it happened? Well, I'm not going to tell you... And I said, okay. So I just I I I blocked her. I said, okay, we're not going to go round and round and round and round and round and round. Just now, I'm not feeling well. As a matter of fact, I took a day off from work because I wasn't feeling good, and just go okay. But I I noticed that she was running away. I said, where did she get that tune? Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Little redheaded. A butterfly that I, you know, still, you know, really love and care for in the world, and sometimes I'm hard on hard on her because because I do care for her just as much as I do care for all the butterflies. I treat her as if she's one of my own relatives. That's why I'm hard on her. So, okay, and just as much as I love the other butterflies too. And, some are kind of hard. Some of them are kind of hard to love, but I love them. All, I love them all the way. But Molly has made some claims, and she's not coming forward, and she's not saying. She's saying Mark's doing X, Y, and Z, and yet, when confronted. It 
strike me as a very good Christian witness. Harsh words, harsh description, but is that a really good Christian witness? Remember, in the Church of Nazareth, you're supposed to live a lifestyle of holiness. And we're, in Galatians 5, we're supposed to get rid of the lust of the flesh and put on the fruit of the Spirit. And speaking the truth in love. So, so Molly's made some claims. Other butterflies have a kind of mouth variance on it, but nobody wants to do any fact checking on it. Well, that's you know, if somebody makes a claim, it's worthy of being fact checked and checking the accuracy of the information. So I've got seven of them that that Molly's made since uh, about 2017 now. So let let's look let's look at these. Number one. Mark stalked me in, to St. Louis, or a, a variation thereof. Okay. Well, here's my side of the story. Molly knew I was going to be in St. Louis. She knows I'm a diehard Cardinals fan. If you watch my, if you watch my, uh, my videos, you oftentimes see me sporting a St. Louis Cardinals cap. So obviously, you know I'm, I will, you know, I'm a diehard Cards fan, even if they're dead last. Or if they go to the series, she knew for weeks because we were we were all members at Northwest Church of Nazarene at the time, and she knew I was going to go to go to St. Louis to catch a game. She, sorry, she knew that I was a was a was going to catch was going to catch a game. She also knew that I was going to be out at the Turner Syndrome uh, chasing butterflies walk in in uh, Collinsville, Illinois, in uh, September twenty third, twenty fourth, uh, twenty fifteen. Okay, what she didn't expect, and, and I immediately took full ownership, is she wasn't expecting me to surprise her on the flight. And quite innocently, I said it would be nice to surprise her. Okay, butterflies don't like surprises. And when Molly, when Molly was in major anxiety, I immediately backed off. People remember that I was debating whether I should cut the trip short and come and just come back, you know, just catch the baseball game and then come back early. I mean, I was looking at a lot of you know, a lot of different options. Um, at the time, I immediately got a hold of my wife and told my wife, "Get a hold of church. We, Molly's in trouble." Now, so uh, the other thing, the other thing too, though, is I would, you know, I was just prepared to to do, do a couple things in St. Louis and then catch my flight, my afternoon flight back to Columbus. But the fact of the matter is, Molly did text me and apologized and asked for forgiveness. She didn't like surprises and yes, she would love to have me come out to the Turner Syndrome walk. It was a blast. I had a delightful time. I didn't spend too much time with, with Molly, but I spent, I spent time with with, uh, one, with one of her in-laws. It was just a delightful gal. Just had, just had a wonderful time of, uh, of, of fellowship. The other thing too that I was debating about whether to go back whether to go back to church because I didn't know if Molly's going to feel safe or not. As, but Marilyn Van Gilder actually sent me a letter saying, describing Molly's situations and her anxiety and, and said, please, come, we, want to we want you to come back. And as people have seen, even though the people don't want to look at it, uh, there are in fact the letter to Marilyn Van Gilder and then there was then there was a very soft and very soft and very tender letter uh, to you know to Molly. Let's you know that will you know we promise to be open and if I ever cross cross her boundary, and we continue to be uh, good friends for the remainder of uh, 2015 and then into into uh, 2016, and we had a really bad pastor who came into Northwest and. Uh, because, you know, because of that, I felt that he could effectively serve, and my wife and I made the decision to leave, leave the church. Um, the fact of the matter is that I know that Molly in 2016 was very sick, and I just I knew in the heart of hearts she wanted out, and and I just I wished her well. I wished her well. The last time I had really talked to her in depth was in June of 2016, and I wished her well. And, and then moved moved on, but still, 
still feeling a, a call and a leading from the Lord to go ahead and, and to advocate and to support and to minister uh, to adult women. Now, look at the opposite word, adult women, 18 or older uh, in the Turner Syndrome community. And, uh, and well, actually, I think we'll, we'll go, well, I think I'll address that, I'll, I'll address that one later. So that, so right there, we, we pretty much squashed the St. Louis incident. Uh, number two, Ma, I've heard Molly say, Molly is fearful that I'm going to follow Turner Syndrome Sisters home. This was a fear that she had. She expressed in the, I believe, I'm not too sure at what point, but she did express it in the, uh, the, the email of the fall of 20, 2017. This is where she was afraid that it was going to molest children, that it was going to stalk, that it was going to preach at Turner Syndrome. And it, it just, I think if anybody looked at, looked at it, I think people would go, Molly, what's wrong? And as a matter of fact, Turner Syndrome sisters actually did and Molly ran. I know, remember, Kathleen Sarsfield tried to reach out to her, and Molly blocked her. Other Turner Syndrome sisters tried to, to reach out, and Molly blocked them, too. So she ran. And it's part of that same pattern, and it kind of evolved with that Turner Syndrome sister, you know, doing doing attacks, but not backing it up. And when confronted, just going, No. No. And this is a Christian woman. I know she's a Christ follower. And she, she should know her Bible well enough. There's a serious accusation. It needs it needs witnesses. It needs times. They, not just hearsay. Not just National Enquirer garbage. But actual facts and dates. And the, the funny thing is when I try to press sisters on it. Crickets. Or. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't sound terribly. Doesn't sound terribly honest. Like, gee, I mean, if you have a, if you have something, bring it forward. Okay. Now, I think we can easily. I think this one we can easily squash. And and here's how. Before Molly and I were friends at Northwest Church of Nazarene, uh, the church had it was having a special series of meetings of how to counter the declining membership in the church. And there were special home meetings, and there were a list of homes. In there was the list of the Van Gilders. And I don't know where they lived. I didn't really know. It's just like, huh. And I kind of knew, but it's just like, if you ask me, if you really press me for, the, for their address, I wouldn't know. And, I, and Michelle and I just said, you know, I don't think Ma gonna be, would be comfortable with that idea. So we struck a line to that, to that choice, looked where the other one, and we decided to go to uh, Pastor Bob Morrison, and Sister Annie's house uh, for for for, the, for for a Sunday night meeting. The Van Gills were holding a fire number. Uh, it was a Tuesday night meeting, so we opted to go to the to the Sunday night meeting. We couldn't find the place, and we kind of gave up. Yeah, that's you know that's 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 life in the in the in the big in the big city. But I think that if somebody were ever to contact Bob Morrison, they say, oh yeah. So so obviously we know that that one's not true. Uh, the only sister that I thought about about visiting, and you know, we had a very good, close, consensual uh, relationship, and you know I thought about it, but unfortunately, just given where I am, it would have been an easy, it would have been a twelve-hour drive each way, and you know just at, just at the time, I just I, I just didn't have the time, so it's like, and she said, well, hey, thanks for the offer, I really appreciate it, and that, you know that that's the end of that. Anybody knows knows that I meet either in public places or, or restaurants or or on, on, so, on social media. So again, the reason that I did not go to the Van Gilders is because I knew Molly would not be comfortable. So we can, so I think that one can be can be squashed. Um, Molly has a habit of turning trying to turn her fears in into facts, and. Another uh, accusation that Molly's made is that I preach the gospel of Turner Syndrome events. Well, obviously I think that when I went up to Eden Prairie in uh, September 2016, I had no. <laughs> no, I went to meet with educators. 
Uh, there was a special project with uh, with the mathematics department at the University of Minnesota. I talked to some of the staff there. I talked to I talked to an educator about who was very well skilled in learning disabilities and Turner syndrome, and we actually had an academic discussion. And she was interested in why you know why I made the trip and why I had my interest. So. Uh, Casapolis, Michigan. So no complaint, no complaints there. Actually, actually helped out there. Helped pick up cans. Helped direct traffic. And had the just a blast with the with the Turner Syndrome sister. Now the sister and I had gone our separate ways, and that's again, okay. and, and and I respect her. mom, a very wise woman who I have just incredible amounts of respect for. I learned a lot from her. In Casapolis, Michigan. McKinney, Texas. Actually, there were staff members from Houston uh, that, that came up. It's about four, about four or five hour drive. So that's easy enough to do. In Pennsylvania, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, and then of course I was at the 2018 North Carolina Regional Conference. So, so obviously there were no records there. Here's wh here's where this here's where this kind of came from. Um, at the same time, I was wanted to go down to the Turner Syndrome Conference in Cincinnati. Molly was comfortable. I said, okay, that's fine. And I was, we were playing around with some ideas, and <laughs> it went over like a lead balloon. Take ownership for it. Okay. Nice idea. Uh, sorry, Mark. Don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> okay. We can live with that. But Molly and you know, I were just talking, and she being Christian, I said, would you like to join me for some open-air preaching you know, at, at, at some point? She wasn't too thrilled about the idea, so I just dropped it. And that's, you know, it's like, okay, that's not such a hot idea. Okay, but that's fine. And and I dropped it. So, but somehow she keeps going on, keeps going on with the lie, with the facts of the matter. I haven't. Uh, I don't know where. And then Molly's been spouting that I would that, that I molest that I've molested children. The fact is that she expressed a fear that I would. And she's never been able to be able to explain, you know, why. Or what it's about. Molly knows I have an open door policy. If it's you know, and if she has trouble with it, that's fine. I, I can, I can, yeah, I can, I can respect that. But Molly knows I have an open, open door policy, and something's bothering her. She can come to me, no question, no questions asked, day or day or night. And if she's having trouble, she's more than welcome to, more than more than you know, can get another Turner Syndrome sister to, you know, to help explain the situation. I'm fine with that. That would be that'd be fine if she can't. If she's having trouble vocalizing a concern, another sister can come by and say, hey, we talked to Molly, this is what she's going on. Oh, okay, great, okay. Okay, well, I can, oh, okay. Well, let's see what we can do to make adjustment. And people know they've had conflicts and I've always been quick uh, to, to, make, to make adjustments. Now, to answer that, to answer that question, I think that the, that the man's response, not that I'm rubbing her face in it, but I would say for the sake of accountability, First off, in the fall of 2015, two women actually had interviewed me. One of them I later learned was actually a, a victim of some massive domestic abuse. So she felt comfortable enough to say, yes, Mark, you're welcome to the Turner Syndrome community. I think that really speaks volumes about, about my integrity. Uh, and again, Molly was, when the fear came to surface, she was encouraged to share what was going on. Catherine Sarchfield and I attempted to reach out. She blocked, she bolted and blocked people at, at, on Facebook. And number five, she said that I stalked her at Meadow Park Church. Okay, here's the full thing. Now, stalking is repeated. Just running into somebody at a church, running into stores, it's not, it has to be repeated. Now, in our church traditions, you probably heard that, that slander is a very serious, egregious offense that can hurt people and it's hurting people now. So, obviously I contacted the, the pastor of the church where they were employed, and Marilyn was apparently in, in ministry, and it's something not to, not to take lightly as we can see how it's evolved today. You know, and the, what happened is our communications, I had the communication, the pastor said, oh, they're not members of the church. Well, apparently, they may not be members, but they were definitely regular regular attenders. 
So in good faith, I said, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry to bother you. And okay, we'll just let it go. And I said, okay, they're not members there. Let's check out the church. Michelle and I were absolutely horrified to see Marilyn and Gilder there. And quite instantly, what happened? It was, was I, you know, I asked the server in the coffee bar, uh, where's the restrooms? Oh, men's room is just to that door and last door on the left. Okay. He didn't know what was going on. I didn't see Molly. Molly saw me. And she, she, and we all know about the seizure. I think the reason she had the seizure, she, she got caught. <laughs> Pure and simple. She doesn't want to take ownership. And maybe at that point when she had the seizure, maybe she said, okay, I'm done. Maybe we should, maybe we should have stopped there. Marilyn continued to spread yet more rumors. And about the, we've heard the ones about the stalking and the police reports and the protective order. And we know that those hogwash too. I've checked them. So, okay. I did advise Meadow Park, though, of Molly's bullying tactics, resulting in the taxes on uh, uh, Catherine Sarchfield, other TS sisters, and the death threat level gets me uh, from another TS sister. My understanding is Molly's no longer employed at Meadow Park. They did attempt to return to Northwest Church of Nazarene, which leads to the next accusation. Stalking at the Northwest Church of the Nazarene. And everyone's spreading rumors that, um, that I stalked Molly at Northwest Church. But well, first off, we were both members there. Okay, quite innocently, the Van Gilders were thinking about coming back to Northwest. I was, and then because the ministry, the CS ministry failed, I was looking for a new church home, so I figured I'll just go back to go back to uh, Northwest as well. So the pastor invited me, said, sure, we'd love to have you. Another man in the church uh, said, hey, John, I know you were thinking about coming back. Why don't you come to the men's breakfast? So neither of us had any knowledge that either that I were going to be there. And actually, I wasn't in confrontation with John at all. Uh, John would remember uh, Mr. Van Gogh, if you will. Uh, you know, I was very gracious. I picked up his plate when I was cleaning up. You know, and I just, and I just listened to the, uh, uh, to, you know, to, to the conversation. And then, and then uh, John uh, uh, ch chose to, to leave. And the devotional time went on without incident. Now, as it, turn, as it, turn, as it turns out, I did find a, a good sister church, and we're, do, we're doing quite well. Um, the last one could have been, but I think, I think since before somebody tries to attempt it, I think let's just go ahead and tell the truth on this one. Somebody might say that I followed Molly to Salt Lake City. Well, Jeremy and Catherine Sartfield and I, several Tia sisters were planning to meet in Salt Lake City for, for a get-together. I had some vacation time, and I figured, okay. So I decided to go ahead and take a, take a long weekend. They were going to be I think uh, they're on Thursday, and then they were gonna, they were going to leave, and then I was going to spend a couple of days in Salt Lake City, and then just return return on on Saturday. Um, now a lot of people did back out, which was kind of interesting. Now Catherine's saying that they backed out because nobody wanted to talk with me. Well, right off the bat, I can another sister and I actually did meet at a restaurant in our, in our hometown. We had a delightful time of uh, of fellowship, and I was. Delighted and honored to to buy a lunch, and we just had we just had a, a very a very nice time. So obviously, uh, Catherine is not being honest. But here's the important thing, and I discovered this weeks later. I just I found out there was a picture of Molly flying to Salt Lake City for medical procedure. Now I'm not sure about the if they were the exact same dates or not, but the fact that the flight that that every that the Lord closed the doors on everything. Including, and closed the doors on, and with, by causing the flight to be canceled due to mechanical. I think that's God's hand of providence, quite, you know, quite frankly. And we were able to head an emotional disaster at the past. So obviously, I've been able to show a consistent pattern of Molly uh, bearing false witness uh, when, when being confronted. And I think uh, Jesus has this admonition. Molly knows that we're in the Nazarene church, we're supposed to live a lifestyle of holiness. And that includes speaking the truth, the truth and love, not engaging in lies and gossip and, and, and slander. That's very much, and it's taken very seriously that it would, re, that if the evangelists did return to Northwest, yes, they would be facing disciplinary action. 
and a, and a church hearing as per the Nazarene Book of Discipline. Okay, for whatever reason they chose not to, they decided the kitchen was too hot, and they went, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. They were the ones who chose it, I didn't. But Jesus has, has these warnings. So if you're leaving, leaving your gift at the altar, and there remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going with him to court. Lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will not get out until you paid the last penny. That's Jesus. That's not Mark. That's our Lord. Okay. But, you know, the one of the Ten Commandments says not to bear false witness. So, so, what do you do to get out of the mess of this one? Very easy. I've done it. You surrender. That's what you do. And I think the other, and I think even some of the Christians have got to, have got to, you know, really take, you know, as Christian believers have got to say, you know, if, if Molly is bearing false witness, and that's one of the, and you know, that's obviously the Ten Commandments, then I think that I think the church is, I think it's got an obligation to, to call Molly and Marilyn accountable. Again, Molly, just come to me and let's talk. If you confess your sins, he's just and ripe, and he will forgive you of all of all unrighteousness. Paul says that we're called to a ministry of reconciliation and obviously the bulwark of the Christian faith is to speak not lies and hate, but speaking the truth in love.